Wow. 2022. I had to make a list for this. And after making this list, I feel very, very accomplished for what we were able to accomplish this year. Starting off this year in January, we had no walls. You could see from the front door all the way through to the very back of the house in the primary bedroom. We had studs. We barely, by the very, very, very skin of my teeth, got siding up before the end of the year last year. Well, one, because I had a huge mess up and didn't order enough siding. That's one that thing that happened. Delays in weather, things just happened last year. So starting off this year, you could see straight through the house. We had the electrical wires run, but we had no electrical. We had no running water. We had no AC, nothing was working. So the very first project in January that we tackled was protecting the siding that I mistakenly didn't buy, had to pay more for so it to be rushed and it being put on the house, we painted. And we painted the entire house. I painted the entire house. Also, little story time, I found out that I was allergic to the particular primer that I was using and I broke out in hives like, <laughs> For the next like two weeks, couldn't figure out what I was allergic to. Finally realized that it was the Kills primer. Something in it I'm allergic to. I can't even touch it now. I can't even be around it. Also in January, we insulated the house. So they came and they blew insulation in the entire addition. And Romeo and I added insulation into the walls that we could get to. The great thing about an old house is it has a natural insulator of air. It's trapped between basically wood, but old houses are just not as insulated as new houses are with, you know, modern things, modern developments that we've made. We did the most insulation that we possibly could. And we also finished installing all the windows. I mean, there were still holes in this house in January. Like it was not in livable condition at all. As we moved into February, it was still really cold out, but we were able to get all of the drywall hung. The guys came. I can't even believe that I thought that I would be able to drywall this place myself. Those things are heavy. Those sheets are heavy. I'm so glad we hired that out. They were able to hang all the drywall, tape and float it, get it all perfect. We did a level five in the front of the house, which is one of the highest levels you can go to uh, in drywall finishes. It's a really smooth finish. There's a lot of sunlight in this front area. I just really wanted the entrance to the house to have this like nice, nice sheen on the drywall and be really smooth. And then we saved on money in the back of the house by actually doing an orange peel finish is where they spray a texture. The very last project that our framing guys worked on was done in February as well. And they framed out our front porch, the top, the roof, where the structure of it so that we could start working on that. We also worked on the fireplace framing. I framed the inside out myself and then the framing guys framed the outside going up further than the top of the pitch of the roof outside so that we could start talking to a mason to actually come out and do a rock detail that I wanted in the house. Limestone is a local material here. I wanted this German looking schmear over the top of it. It was really specific to this area and I really wanted to bring that local detail, that local characteristic um, to the house and make the house really feel like it fit here, which was the first project we worked on in March. It was starting to warm up a little bit. The Masons did such an amazing job. They worked so fast and so well. At first they weren't doing enough schmear as I wanted them to do. So they were sending me pictures. I was at it, I was telling them to add more. They literally did an amazing job. So amazing that I hired them to do five limestone rock columns along the front of the house so that we could build a really, really pretty fence. While we had a lot of workers here in the beginning of the year, I was starting to work on projects inside the house and really prioritizing the spaces that we were gonna need to move in. The guest bathroom was top priority and also the kitchen. I had never really built cabinetry before. I would built a few things that I could apply my knowledge to, but I wanted to DIY all of our cabinets. I was gonna tackle it. I was like, why not try it? And our kitchen ended up turning into the largest DIY project land ever. 
Everything was DIY. There were so many pieces. The DIYs came together over the year and just made it into a beautiful space. So we started with the kitchen cabinetry. I made one and then I made four and now, now I've made a ton more. And while we were doing the kitchen cabinet project, I also started prioritizing the guest bathroom because we were gonna need a bathroom when we moved in here. And I very much knew we were gonna move into a construction site, but that's okay because it's just <laughs> what I wanted. So we started on the guest bathroom and this this space has the most unique characteristics. I feel like it's a combination of all of these truly unique details down to the penny tile gives so much visual texture. We did a contrasting grout to pull in some warmth that we did in the brown paint that we had the accent. So the ceiling and this little alcove was done in brown. And then I made the room a little more bright and airy and subtle um, by pairing it with a neutral lighter color. I did a thrift flip on an old phonograph cabinet and turned it into our vanity. I found a sink at the flea market for 19 bucks for this space. Um, we got my pretty toilet. <laughs> this space was actually the old kitchen and it was like an add-on. So the roof is a little bit slanted, which made it even more unique. It had original beadboard on the ceiling and the walls and it had hardwood floors. The hardwood was actually underneath a laminate that we took up. If you look at inspiration pictures of bathrooms that are from the early 1900s, late 1800s, a lot of them actually have hardwood. And if they don't have it still, it's probably underneath whatever they put down. So I wanted to keep the hardwood in this space, but also extend the penny tile underneath the the tub so that there was some protection for for the for the way and it's held up great there are no problems with having that wood in the bathroom especially a guest bathroom that we won't use very often since we purchased the house in february of 2021 we had been working on the flooring in various forms the flooring was all original longleaf pine but most of it was covered by this kind of gestury diamond shaped laminate or various forms of that in the different parts of the house. So over time, we were slowly picking away at that. We had it tested, it was safe for us to pick up, which we were lucky. But we, over time, we were just chipping away and chipping and chipping away. When we got to May, we really dove into the flooring project because the house was now closed up. It was sealed up. We had drywall. It was with all the contractors and everything were out of the house. We were able to do the flooring without it getting messed up. It not only meant that we needed to continue to pick up all the laminate off the original 100-year-old hardwood that was in here. We also needed to lay new hardwood to match that flooring. My mom handed me every board and we laid new flooring in the entire house. And also we needed to tile the areas that were gonna be tiled. So the laundry and the primary bathroom, we did a herringbone porcelain tile and it has like a, a wood kind of texture to it. It's a really, it's really beautiful. It's actually discontinued and I got a great deal on it. So we saved tons on budget by not only the material, but laying it all ourselves, we saved so much. We rented so many pieces of equipment to restore these floors. It was by far and away the largest project in this whole house. Now I thought restoring our felt like hundred windows, the original windows that were for this house. I thought that that was a big project. No, no, no. The floors, my body after, not okay. If I had to do it again, I would hire it out. Uh, but I am really proud at the outcome. They're beautiful. We did a great sealer on them, so they'll last hopefully another 100 years, especially with the addition of the pine that we used in, in the addition. And I'm very, very happy with how they turned out. So I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I proved that I could do it. Now next time, next house, I'll, probably, <laughs> I'll hire that out for sure. May was actually such an exciting month. A lot happened because not only did we do the floors, but we also got electrical turned on, which after our electrician ran off on us, that was a great thing. We also got the ACs turned on. It was warming up a lot. It was hot out. I did not want to go through another year of renovating in the heat, the Texas heat. It was so great. And since the house was closed up, we were able to, to run the AC. And now that we had the rock columns in the front, we were able to measure for our DIY fence. My dad is an amazing welder. I'm so lucky. He was able to build our fence for the entire front yard for just the cost of material. So it was about $1,600. Incredible. 
absolutely love it. Once we got it installed, we painted it satin black. It's absolutely stunning. I love it. We also did our first like start to finish makeover in May, which was our dining room. The dining room is such a like calming oasis. I love the table that we found. It's salvaged from France. It's absolutely beautiful. It has these dovetail knots in the top. It's a continuation from the kitchen. So I wanted the same kind of color palette to run through. So we used a combination of gray mist and pashmina. We had already done so much work to give so much detail to the ceiling. We put original salvaged beadboard that we saved from the bathroom up onto the ceiling. And so it, it continued the beadboard into that entire part of the house, which was absolutely beautiful. I love that we added two windows in the space because it gave it so much more light in the front of the house. It's the perfect little dining room tucked into the front of the house. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. When we got to June, I was like, I'm moving in. I want to live there. I want to be in the project. I want to just breathe it every day. You know, now that we're into the year and I'm pretty tired, I'm I'm not not regretting that, but oh, it was a lot. I was in constant renovation mode. My brain never stopped, but it was so amazing to be in the space. It allowed us to see how we were going to live here and what we were really going to need and which way we walked like, you know, more often and and just just living in it is a, a totally different experience. So we moved in in June into a full-on construction site. That meant we had to finish the plumbing. The plumbing got finished like literally days before we moved in. So we had a functioning bathroom, which was exceptional. And then we had also the refrigerator installed and my plumber was here the same day installing our kitchen sink. So it was very livable, even though it was a construction site. I can't remember if I had finished the island before we moved in or after. It was kind of the project that I was working on. And very early on in the renovation process, when we couldn't save our front porch and we couldn't and we had to tear it down and when we tore down the porch posts we knew we couldn't reuse them because they were rotten on the bottom but the decorative portion of the porch post could be reused and i had this idea to use them as the legs for the island i had never built an island before but luckily it was just a combination of cabinetry and i i had a lot of practice doing cabinetry because i had done all this back here so i just sketched what i wanted and tackled it and i knew i wanted the island to be a statement I knew what our granite was going to look like. I knew it was lighter in color. So I wanted to do a contrast on the like base of the island. And I know I scared you guys when I was like, I'm gonna paint my island black. <laughs> and we were like, what? And I was I love it. It's absolutely amazing. I love the contrast that it gives. And I also love that the black island ties into the soapstone countertops that we did along the back wall. In July, we tackled this pretty little area. It just gives me library vibes. She's, she's decorated for Christmas right now, but I love our entryway. This is the very first thing you see when you walk in the house. So I knew it was something that I wanted to tackle early on in the renovation project so that it actually felt like we were making progress. When we came home every day, I could look at something that was really beautiful. So we, we, we tackled this with a combination of my mom's art and thrifted finds. Um, and painted it this beautiful millstone gray, which in here looks a little more blue, but in the same color we did in the living room and it looks a little more green, which is crazy, but it's the same color. It's just the perfect little moody area to invite you to go back. This is, this is the entryway to the addition. One other project that we actually completed in July was doing our porch decking. For a while, we were just walking on plywood because we had the framework for the porch floor, but we didn't have anything on it. We waited on materials for a while, but when we finally got our composite decking down, Romeo and I tackled the deck and it really started to bring the outside to life. Um, and we actually had something solid to walk on so that when they did bring our oven and appliances and stuff, they were actually able to get them in the house. As we got to August, we knew we were getting closer and closer to the colder months. So I really wanted to get our fireplace finished. So in, in August, they came and installed our direct vent fireplace. I love this thing. I've been running it all winter. It's a natural gas direct vent fireplace and it's 
absolutely the best thing ever. I love it. I love the cozy vibes. Also in August, we were gearing up to make some major progress in the kitchen too, and we DIY'd our beams. Since our kitchen was actually the old bathroom, there were these two spaces in the ceiling that were holes now because it's where I took down the walls. They weren't structural anything. We, we, we made it more structural up there, so they weren't structural walls. I still needed to make it look better. It was like holes up there, and it was breaks in the beadboard on the ceiling. So I DIY'd some wood beams to go up there. They're faux beams. We made, we distressed them to make them look real and it was the perfect addition to the kitchen. It brought the warmth up to the ceiling and also hid that hole, which was the best of both worlds. In September, I hit the ground running on the kitchen. We had had pieces and DIY projects that I had worked on in here, but there were so many elements that I needed to just come in the kitchen and work and as long as I possibly could. Building out our boxed window detail that I designed very early in the renovation process. DIYing our range hood, which I love, absolutely love. And it corresponds to the living room as well, so it brings some synergy. Building and installing upper cabinetry, installing our pretty pendant lights, and also getting the wrong oven delivered after we waited on it for a year and for somehow it being the greatest mistake that has ever happened to me <laughs> it's beautiful but she's still not installed still still not happening let's not talk let's not talk about it i'm, I'm kind of stressed about it so let's not talk about it but it's here and we're not waiting on any appliances. We have everything that was on order for so long. So I'm very, very grateful. Continuing into October, we were still working on all the kitchen details, including building the cabinet doors. Going to originally buy our cabinet doors and then just paint them. And then I had this crazy idea to just go ahead and build them myself. And then I did one, I tested it, and it actually turned out pretty good. Then I gave myself a project to do 43 more cabinet fronts that are still a work in progress. I have not finished it. I think I would have finished it if I didn't move into the living room, uh, but I, I, I did, so uh, it's it's okay. Eventually this house will get done. Uh, and eventually our refrigerator will not look like this and we'll actually have the cabinet fronts on it because this is totally our cabinet ready refrigerator. <laughs> In November, we were getting really close to the holidays and I had not done anything really in the living room at all and I was starting to panic. So I stopped the kitchen project, I came into the living room and I was like, I've gotta make this happen. Months before, we had already put beadboard that we salvaged from the bathroom too on these walls because I wanted that to be a texture behind some bookshelves. So I needed to just basically finish this wall out that's behind me. And so there was a lot of elements. I had to finish out the fireplace wall. I had to patch sheetrock. I did a plaster texture and then we lime washed over it to give it some visual dimension. The mantle that we found at the flea market Love it, cleaned it up, painted it, restored it, installed it, built our hearth, which is actually made from salvaged brick from the house. We dropped all the chimneys that were just left over in, in the ceiling. They weren't even functional. They weren't even used anymore. They were just up there. So every solid piece I saved. We might do a little bit of a detail to it later, but I love it. And then built our bookshelves on each side of the fireplace. And we went with the same color as the entryway because I wanted it to tie in here. I've never built something that grand before, but adding the crown molding, finally figuring out how to do crown molding and wrapping my head around it was a major accomplishment in this space. Hanging our beautiful lighting that I had for over a year, just having this space come to life so that we could actually decorate for Christmas and we could celebrate the holidays here was a total tool to us. So it's it's coming along. We still have a few things to do in the living room, but it, it's it's 90% there. Being a few weeks into December, Romeo and I did tackle one renovation project outside. We DIY'd our paved walkway. It rains a lot in the winter here. We were constantly walking through mud. We really needed to tackle it. So we were able to lay that, pick the perfect paver for the walkway. Without that actually wasn't the only DIY that I tackled. I did our DIY backsplash in the kitchen and it's absolutely beautiful. I went with a straight pattern. I feel like it gives the kitchen that juxtaposition between old and new that I wanted it being like that straight pattern. If I follow my gut, I'll always go moody. Absolutely perfect for our kitchen. So looking back on 2022, I feel so accomplished. Literally have done so much in just a year. 
And even just in the little over a year and a half that we've had this house, we've done so much. I mean, it's livable. I'm living here, but there's still so many fun projects to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed this journey so far. We are definitely very much in the pretty progress, the pretty stage of this renovation. We have to finish the living room, finish the kitchen, work outdoors, and also we have two bedrooms, a primary bathroom, a laundry room, a pantry, the coffee pantry to go. We're in the decorating phase and I could not be more happy to be here. Thank you guys so much for being on this journey with me. I hope you have enjoyed every video this year. This is my final renovation video before I take a little mini break. I will be back in the new year. We're gonna get back to it. So I will see you guys in three Sundays. Bye guys. You gonna say bye to everybody? Say thank you so much for watching our journey. We hope you have a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday.